Oh, how's it going guys? It is now December 26th. It is the day after Christmas and we have one of those real grinder grinder of a days for you guys. It is two degrees right now at one o'clock. It was negative six I believe when I woke up. This is typically the days when I stay inside and I don't go ice fishing but when you have a YouTube channel the show must go on no matter the circumstances. Now my only concern today is not really about the weather. The weather can be very dangerous, but I am prepared. I have so many layers on, I'm not cold, and it's not very windy. The wind is a problem when it's cold, as you guys saw in the last episode with me and John when we just wimped out from getting our hands so wet in the cold and wind. But today, we are finally going to ice fish. As you guys saw in my last couple of videos, fishing wasn't exactly very good. Open water fishing opportunities in Chicago at the end of December are slim to none, and the ones that are available aren't the best. So ice fishing is what's really fun this time of year. We finally got this cold blast. It got these ponds locked up. Today we are not going after panfish. I got the spoons and the Swedish pimples tied on. We are going after bass today. I drove like an hour away, honestly, so this pond better pan out. But I drove to a pond that's been pretty good to me through the ice for bass fishing. There are some big bass in here, so a four or five pounder would be a late Christmas miracle for me to get through the ice. But I'm gonna walk out there. We got about three inches now. Hopefully they're biting. That's my only concern because the cold is not the problem, but the low wind, the high sun, and the high pressure. The pressure is like 30.7 right now. It's super high, and I have never done well ice fishing when the pressure is really high. Ponds are fun and all, and I'm excited to get back on the ice. However, what I'm really looking forward to is my big ice fishing trips. January 2nd through the 7th, I'm going to Lake Simcoe and then Bay of Quinte. If you guys fish either of those areas and have the juice, hit me up. I had an awesome time with great luck out at Simcoe last year. I have never been to Bay of Quinte, and I really want tips out there. So I'd love to catch a 10 pound walleye out there. Speaking of 10 pound walleye, I am really praying that Erie's gonna freeze. That's the other big one. I'd spend a week out there if Erie freezes. And then also I might go to Little Bay to knock or Lake Winnipeg. Those are the big trips I have in my mind right now. All right, just finished drilling my two holes. We got a solid four inches out here, but if you guys have ever tried to film in extreme cold like this, you're gonna understand my struggle today. I'm going to go through all 10 of my batteries Lithium batteries in cold weather are not friends. They do not mix. A typical GoPro battery probably lasts about an hour and a half. In the cold, if I get 15 minutes, I'm lucky. See, when I started, this battery was full, and now it's already showing just one out of three battery bars, and I've been out here for not even 10 minutes. Let's pop this Garmin down there. Hopefully, we don't have to drill many holes looking for them. That's my goal today. If you guys haven't seen, this is that brand new, super cool Garmin Panoptics Ice Bundle. We're not gonna use a revolutionary tool, this Panoptics, because this is a tiny shell pond. I know exactly where they are. Guides are gonna be freezing today. I like this sonar for filming when we're not in extreme glare, because you guys can see exactly what's going on as opposed to the regular just circle flasher. See here's what I'm talking about why it's so much better for showing you guys what's going on. That's my jig bouncing up and down at that eight foot mark. And that is gonna be the problem today. Frozen guides. All right, little update for you folks here. And that's what happens when it's so cold, your camera just dies immediately. But little update for you guys. I've been out here for an hour. I've drilled over 10 holes and I just cannot find them. This is the only deep hole in the whole lake. It's very, very strange. It's honestly like this lake had a fish kill or something because this hole is filled with all the bass, bluegill, crappie, even catfish that can't survive in the shallow areas through the winter. And there's just nothing here. I'll show you guys. I don't have the official panoptics mount, but if you guys don't know what panoptics is, it's a forward sonar. So typical sonar is just straight down. This panoptics, I'm shooting 35 feet no matter which way this transducer is facing. So it's facing that way right now. And you can see the depth is pretty standard, but I'll go in a circle and there is absolutely nothing down there. Fish will show up as like yellow or red dots on the sonar. And yeah, I've done a, a full circle and there is absolutely nothing but just a tiny little yellow dot here and there, which that's just a tiny bluegill. What I should be seeing is very large red dots near the bottom, a little off of it, which would indicate fish, and uh, just absolutely nothing out here. I don't know why. I have not marked a single fish 
on the traditional down sonar either. It's really strange. It really is just like the lake had a fish kill or something like that. So I am not going to bang my head against the wall here any longer. I'm going to switch lakes. I'm really hoping it's something to do with this pond specifically, and it's just not the fact that this cold front really did shut them down that badly because they could be just belly on the bottom in the mud, not moving at all. That would not be good. All right, I have made it to my basically old reliable ice pond. If I can't catch fish here, then the fish just are straight up lockjaw, bellies in the dirt, not doing anything on the bottom. This is a pretty small pond, but it's got some pretty big bluegills in it and uh, it's got a good amount of bass. It's where I caught bear gills, as you guys know, because I have already filmed a video here this winter and I caught basically as many bluegills as I wanted to through the ice. So if they're not budding on this pond in the first like half hour, then I don't know what to do. Then it might be like a sunrise sunset bite type of thing because when you're ice fishing, especially on these like really sunny, cold, high pressure days, the bite can oftentimes be terrible, but there's always a bite window, whether that be sunrise, sunset, like I said, usually that first light, last light bite is the deal. So. There's really not that much light left, so even if it sucks here, I'm going to stick it out till sunset. First drop, let's see if I can see anything on the screen. Not marking anything yet. I started the day off with a spoon, but quickly went to a small tungsten jig. Basically the smallest tungsten jig I have. Because when they're finicky through the ice, you got to go small. And Okay, there's a mark. There's a good mark. There's the mark. That's what we're looking for. There's some fish. And we got him. Okay, maybe that other pond just sucked. Because we got a bass. <laughs> All right. Start of the day looking for bass. And we have our first largie of the day. That other pond just obviously sucked. There was something wrong with it. The second he showed up on the screen, he bit. Thank you, bud. Okay. I have a lot more confidence in the day now. That's so strange why that other pond was just off. That's another tip, guys. If you're ice fishing, and you're not getting bit, move, move, move as much as you can. The more you move, the better chance you give yourself, whether that be move different ponds, move areas of the lake. It's nice to be in the suburbs like this where there's ponds everywhere. So if you don't like the bite you're on, just move ponds. See, look at that. That's that's perfect example of why I like this graph so much. There's my jig, the little line. That was a fish that came up to it, inspected it, didn't like what he saw and went back down. Love this graph. Come on, buddy. Look at that, these marks are staying low. See that guy right there? They're staying low, they're not wanting to come up really. They're nice marks. I think I have uh, gotten into a little bass school here. A bluegill is typically not gonna be a mark that strong. Or if it is, it's a big bluegill. All right, getting kind of sick of this hole. That one bass is the only thing I pulled out of it in like 15 minutes. So the bite is definitely not good at all, but I'm just gonna keep moving. I need to take my own advice because I just told you guys when the bite's tough, you need to stay moving and I've sat on my ass for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna drill a lot more holes and try to get this jig in front of their faces because I do not think they're moving much at all. All right, and just as I said that, a couple marks appeared on the screen and this bluegill wanted a piece of it. There's still another mark down there too. Oh, he ate it good too, of course you did. Got it. That was very strange. I wasn't even sure if my camera was recording. I thought it had died. Oh no, back down the hole. And I'm messing around trying to learn this pan optics. It's got this down view and I don't have the right tools for it. There's like a, there's a stand that you have for it. I don't have it with me today, but let me show you guys what I was looking at. That's why I was like so intrigued and just staring at this. So I've got it going down right now. And the settings the graph is on right now, it's 10 feet down. It's shooting six feet to the left and six feet to the right of me also. And I was watching a fish shoot from four feet over to the left all the way to my jig and then bit it. And I wasn't really sure exactly what was happening because like I said, I haven't mastered this thing yet, but that was super cool to see. I cannot wait to take this to open water while I fish. See right there, that's a bluegill moving. That is a fish swimming. This technology is so badass. Look at that. That is a fish swimming. He's now almost directly down the hole. Let's see if I can try to catch it. That was so cool. That was a fish swimming. And of course my guides are completely frozen so I can't get down there. 
I am never going ice fishing without that pan optics mount again. I'm gonna need, when I do this in the future, I'm gonna need a camera on the graph so I can show you guys what I'm doing. I'm freaking hand lining this right now. This is not ideal. There's a fish right under me and he's coming up to it. He's on me, he hasn't bit it yet. This is the most fun I've ever had ice fishing, just staring at this. It's literally a live video game. You can see there's a fish going down. There's a fish swimming off to the right. There's three fish on the graph now. Three different fish. There's two directly under me. Oh, oh, he missed. So that's a fish right there, that big blob. That's a fish that's on my jig. See my jig just separated. He's coming up to it. And he, oh, these must be tiny bluegill. They're not getting hooked. And just like that, all three marks are gone. Oh, now there's two marks coming up. So hot, so hot. Oh, I need to stop hand lining this. He bit it, but I couldn't set the hook. I'm having way too much fun with this. I hope you guys can see what's going on. Oh, I want to use that pan optics down view so badly because it is just 10 times more fun and exciting than using this, even this regular sonar, which is a lot better than the traditional, in my opinion. And we got another. Little better. I'm liking the size of these bluegills better today. Much more respectable size. Still not big by any means, but they're bigger than a ton of three to five inches. That guy's at least six or seven inches. At least. I'm self-conscious about my bluegill size. Leave me alone, guys. Oh, I just want to go frogging. Where it's summer, where did you go? I just want to flip and pitch, and go frogging, and catch muskies on top water. Oh, it is just so cold. Ice fishermen love this super cold weather because it makes great ice. It makes the ice super thick so there's a long season, but it is not very pleasant to be out at here right now. I was texting Spencer this morning. It's like negative 25 up at Lake of the Woods with a real feel like how the air actually feels with the strong winds up there. The real feels like negative 40 and he is ice fishing. That's just crazy. I mean, it's basically zero right now. So to have it be 25 degrees colder, I can't imagine. I felt negative 20 last year in Bemidji when me and Peric were gonna go fish Lake Winnipeg and that was just unbelievable. But there was no wind, so it wasn't that bad. This cold front's crazy, but it just might freeze Lake Erie, so uh, very happy about that. Well guys, we are, uh, we are not in a good place right now. It's about 15 minutes to sunset. All my GoPro batteries have died on me. And you haven't missed anything either because all the marks that I am marking are just shying away. The golden hour sunset bite is not coming to fruition. My hands are not in good shape, even through the wool gloves. It's getting colder and colder and colder as the sun goes down. Funny how that works. My snot is frozen to my nose and I'm pretty much defeated and done for the day. So I'm going to meet you guys at the car. <laughs> 